So you might recall from video seven, I believe, that when we created a sidebar, it had some placeholders, some sprintf uh, code here for our widgets. And I removed it because I didn't want to go over what it meant, but I'll do that right now. I'll refresh your memory. It was this right here that I removed. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add that back, only ours is going to be a little different to our uh, widgets. So the first one we want to add is percent one dollar sign s for our ID. And then we're going to do the same thing for class. And I'll show you what it does to our HTML in a minute. We're going to do the same thing down here for our footer widgets. However, uh, we're going to remove this sidebar module and we're going to put in some bootstrap column classes. Paste that in there. And on extra small screens or mobile screens, I want it to be 12 columns. And on medium sized screens, four. Actually, I don't think I need, I don't even need this one. Yeah, that should work. So I'll save that. Then in my index.php file in the footer, we'll need to use a function that we've seen before, dynamic sidebar, to actually call that widget area. Oops, I believe we call it footer widgets. And also, since each of our widget is going to be wrapped in a bootstrap column class, we're going to need to set up a container. And I'm using Emmet to do this really quickly. But you'll need a div with a class of container. And then within that, you'll need another div with a class of row. And I'll paste that sidebar back in there. And let's see. When I refresh it, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. At least we have our... Um, layout set up. Oh, let's uh, actually let's take a quick look at the markup. We'll see what that extra code we added did. Now if you'll see, switch back to the code really quick. We added ID with this placeholder and then we added a class with this placeholder. And what that does is it passes in the name of the widget, widget type actually meta and then it uh, gives it a unique ID so we've got one for meta got one for calendar recent comments also it did the same for our text widget text dash three widget underscore text so I, I think you get the point um, what that code does the sprint F code does is it adds uh, it helps you out with your your ID and class namings for your widgets so uh, having this set up means we can now create a widget like this one, like the about widget, and we can apply CSS classes to it. So why don't we do that? I'll just copy this into the text widget. Oh, it looks like I never refreshed it here. Let's make sure that uh, footer widgets work. There they go. And then in here, we'll call it about. And then we'll save it. Save it. Okay. Let's look at the CSS here for the about module dash inset. So, what we'll do is we'll take the CSS from this module dash inset. And why don't we apply it to, I guess, ID text dash three. Let's see if that works. Let me open up style.css. Scroll all the way down to here. Actually, hmm. blog posts, where's it at? Sidebar modules, we'll do it right here. Text dash three. So this is sort of the dynamic ID that we created. And then I'll paste in what I just copied. 15 uh, pixels for padding, background color, F5, F5, F5. 
and a border radius of four px, four pixels. Hopefully, when I refresh it, they'll look the same, and they sure do. So now, uh, what this means is we can remove this uh, this hard coded module. We don't want anything that's not dynamic in our theme. Oh, it's in the sidebar.php file. We can remove that. And I'll leave it to you to do the same thing for these two. And what you'll want to do is, is I believe there's an archive widget. So why don't we just add it over here? We'll title the archives and then we'll save it. And so you can take what you've just learned and you can also apply it here. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll handle this little widget area, which is a uh, kind of like a menu. So we'll create a custom menu and then uh, we'll add it to the sidebar area. If you don't want to do the CSS, that's fine. You can just head over to my website and I'll probably just save it there anyway. Thanks for watching.